watching Property Guide on ET Now. Thank you for tuning in. We finally got what we wanted, what we were asking for for so long, a rate cut from the RBI and a rate cut of half a percent. That's 50 basis points. That's considerable. Now, for those of us who have running home loans, this means easier EMIs to manage. But for those of us who've been sitting on the fence wondering whether or not you should be buying homes, does this provide you with that opportunity? Is this rate cut an opportunity for us to go out and buy homes? That's the question that we're asking today. And I have such a strong panel to answer that question for you. Jairam Sridharan is the president of retail lending and payments at Axis Bank. Niranjan Hiranandani, co-founder and managing director at Hiranandani Group. Gidam Baranan, president of Kridai and uh, of course the managing director at ATS joins us from Noida. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Jairam, I'm going to come to you first. We know that Axis Bank brought down or passed on 35 basis points to the customer. From where you're looking at it, from both the home loan market and the home buying market, do you view this as an opportunity that uh, you know borrowers should take advantage of I think there is a set of customers who have made a decision to buy a home their families have expanded or they've run out of space in their current place and they're interested in owning their own property but they are on the margin where they are not sure whether they have the sufficient amount of money to buy the home of their dreams. Uh, for example, they might have money up to 36 lakhs, but really what they want is at 40 lakhs, 42 lakhs. For those kinds of customers, this certainly provides an opportunity. It provides an entry point because the reduction in interest rate increases the loan eligibility that is available to you. And, uh, and that's always a good thing for, uh, for some of these customers. Might not be the case for everybody, uh, if, uh, if if you have not yet made up your mind whether you want to buy a house or not, whether uh, you know, the, the house you really want to buy is at 85 lakhs, then that might not work out for you. All right, I want to ask you a question now, Jaram, simply as a borrower and a customer. If we look at the, uh, the RBI, I will put that on your screen for the viewers at home. The RBI has brought the uh, repo rate down by 1.25% since the beginning of 2015, since the beginning of this year. If I pull out the numbers of Axis Bank, that's 0.65%, or 65 basis points as we like to call it. Why is there such a massive difference in what we pass on? Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, first is that when rates go up, banks don't increase the rates as much either. So there is w w what in the trade we call stickiness uh, to base rates. So when rates in the market increase very rapidly, banks don't tend to increase the rates for customers as much because you, you feel a lot of pressure from existing customers. Similarly, when the rates fall as well, you see, see the same level, of, uh, same level of stickiness, it falls a little bit less. So if you see base rate movement of all banks overall, you'll feel that find it's a much narrower band than uh, the, the repo rate movements, which will be a much, uh, much wider band. Um, the second thing thing is that uh, banks in general want to balance out uh, our overall borrowing cost, uh, which, which we get from depositors, fixed, uh, fixed deposit customers, savings and deposit customers, and bond borrowing, um, uh, along with uh, you know, providing the right service uh, to the customers. And but, so that balance works out that way. Okay, so since, since the RBI governor did say, of course, that there will be a softening of the stand going forward, can we expect from banks like yours that this at least the 120 25% uh, the, that, that the RBI has given us up till now this year will over a period of time be passed on? Absolutely. Can you give me a, a, a sort of a time frame when we can expect that to come in? See, the transmission time period in our estimation is about six to nine months. And, uh, and, and, and slowly you're seeing all that kind of pass through. Our stance has been that the rate cut, for example, that we made yesterday is more a transmission of the prior rate cuts that have happened so far, not exactly what happened day before yesterday, the 50 basis points. So, um, uh, so we're now sort of uh, almost caught up on what, what had happened till day before yesterday. Now for the rest of the stuff, it'll take some more time for it to, uh, for it to go in. But uh, hopefully, over the next uh, you know, six to nine months, all of this will be passed through. All right, six to nine months before we see the remaining 50 basis points being passed on. Uh, Niranjan, Hiranandani, I'm going to come to you first. We, we've been talking about the fact that this is what the industry needs. This is what the buyer needs, lower interest rates. Are you actually expecting people to come in now, take out their checkbooks and start buying homes because of this rate cut? Uh, Faye, a large number of people were waiting because they expected this rate cut to happen. A large number of people are thinking that they need to buy a house and there is a better market position because the builders have 
really a larger number of products to offer in the residential side. I think a combination of these two is going to really make a difference to the market. And the affordable segment is going to see a huge growth in the next 6 to 12 months. Uh, you're going to be surprised as to the amount of volume that is likely to increase in the next couple of months. I see a lot of new interest taking place of old buyers who have hesitated to really close the transaction, now coming in back again to say, okay, this is the time probably when they really want to buy. And I think uh, I am seeing a change in the mindset of many people. But Gitambar, I want to come to you because you're, you know, you operate out of Noida, and Noida has been a market in focus for a very long time. There's been a lot of talk about the overhang, the sort of supply that's available. We know customers have written to us saying we're just waiting for the prices to come down. Do you see this this lower EMI, this lower interest rate as that Diwali discount that we were all hoping for, or is there more to come? See, Faye, what has happened is, uh, with the rate cut, of course, there's uh, a bonanza for the home loan borrower. But also it has lifted the sentiment of the market. So effectively, we expect the buyer, the fence hitter to now come and close that transaction because in spite of hearing time and again that there's going to be a correction in price, it's not happened because I for one have always been saying so that in areas like such as Noida, Noida extension, we are already operating at a very, very uh, thin margin because uh, and there's no room for, a, for the price cut. So the buyer has been misled by uh, various uh, sources to think that you know there will be a further price correction. And for the last three months, there really has been no price correction in real estate. Now, this home loan rate cut is what is really going to spur him and uh, encourage him to go and close that deal as soon as possible. Because from here on, uh, once the velocity of sales increase, and that is bound to happen, uh, as we come closer to the festive season, uh, there will be absolutely you know, the, no scope at all for any further reduction. There may be a slight marginal increase. So this is the best time to buy with a nice home loan rate, uh, rate cut and also with a reasonable price of real estate, not only in Noida, but I speak for the entire country because uh, we have members across the country. So we are very, very hopeful that things are going to move up from here on. Jab coming here, I know that because your business is directly tied to the real estate market, you study that market very closely. Tell me what your forecasts are for the festive season and for the quarter that follows. It, are you, do, you, do you agree with what Mr. Anand said? Do you see sort of like a blanket hardening of prices across the market? I, I don't think Mr. Anand is saying that, but uh, I, I think uh, I do agree with most of what he's saying. I, I do agree that uh, price ranges of 3,500 to 5,000 rupees a square foot are actually fairly reasonable, given what we know to be the price of land and uh, the price of construction. And uh, I do agree with uh, what he's saying as well, that there's been a lot of uh, margin pressure on uh, on builders, and this gives some ability for uh, uh, for some transactions to happen. Um, uh, from a uh, festive season perspective, I feel um, one hasn't actually seen so so far, a lot of increase in uh, in in, in walk-ins on projects, etc. Hopefully, uh, what has happened over the last couple of days gives that incremental momentum. Um, uh, Mr. Hiran Anani was mentioning earlier uh, that it'll it'll be particularly impactful on affordable housing, and I think that's absolutely right. Now, it's that customer in that affordable housing segment uh, who, on the margin, this will make a lot of impact to. And I think those segments you will see a lot more demand coming up. Hopefully, in the festive season. All right, let's talk, let's also talk about the opportunity to bargain at this point. And I'm going to ask this question to both of the builders um, on the panel. And they both speak, you know, um, for builders across the country. So, Dinajan Hiradani, I'm going to come to you first. Do you believe that if I, as a customer, came into any of the sales offices today across the city, across the country, with checkbook in hand, saying, okay, I'm willing to actually now come back to the table and cut that deal. What is the room right now for negotiation if I were to take advantage of, you know, this opportunity now for the next three months during the festive season? Uh, actually, most of the builders operate in the band of the market in which they are operating. So they are already deciding that within a particular band is where you are going to be able to close with a customer. So most of them keep a huge band. Many of the builders keep a huge band in which they can negotiate. But many of the builders now don't do some things like that. There are very small margins which are kept for the purposes of negotiation. The idea is to create a transparency to the customer 
customer in customer that you don't have to come and negotiate with the developer at all so we try to tend to keep hardly 1% margin or 1.5% margin in which you can possibly negotiate and we don't keep it more than that because it otherwise goes against those people who are staying at far away distances and want to settle a matter through the net or through the internet or through uh, uh, emails and other things so we don't give uh, you know that kind of thing you know my research on the ground uh, tells me a completely different story but uh, i want to ask uh, jairam do you agree with that that the margin for negotiation right now is really low is that what your research is telling you as well i think when we see customers uh, coming to us and and we talk to them what we find is uh, there are some builders where uh, negotiation room is less however uh, right now given market conditions uh, in in most projects one is seeing uh, room for negotiation it's different in different markets and uh, some developers as mr hiranandan is pointing out are much more disciplined about their sticker price and uh, don't do anything about it uh, but if you are a buyer uh, my suggestion is take a shot uh, you know have a conversation uh, with your builder go out there with the checkbook in hand as 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 face pointing out and uh, and and see whether you can uh, get a better deal um, my bet is in many places you will be able to All right. We also have, uh, I'm told, VG Kanan, the managing director and group executive at SBI, who joins us on the phone. Mr. Kanan, thank you for joining us. We're talking about the rate cut that we received from the RBI this week. SBI has also passed on a portion of it uh, to the customer. Before we move any further on what this means for the real estate industry, I want to understand from you as well how much more of a transmission can we expect as customers. So, for people watching at home, will SBI bring down rates further in the months to come? I think uh, you are probably correct. Uh, uh, Diwali banana sir, before the Dashera, uh, I think the entire customer a lot has got it. Uh, 40 basis point out of 50 basis point is probably maximum. Uh, what we call uh, transmission which has ever been uh, passed on to the consumers in the recent history of three to four five years. I think that will be a, this is a very good rate. Uh, going forward, I won't say we cannot uh, reduce it, but we'll have to also understand that the cost of funds of the bank. Has to be uh, seen, and the cost of funds have actually not been coming down. We also have to find whether the government also will follow up with the uh, discussions yesterday and the indication that the small savings rate also will come down. So we need to have some action uh, from that end also, and our cost of funds start uh, coming down. There could be some more room for a uh, cut. Mr. Kanan, tell me very quickly, what is your message right now to people looking to buy homes in the country? Do you think this is the opportunity for them to go ahead and do so? <laughs> I think there's no good time or bad time to buy a house. If the right time for you to buy a house is when you get a house which is good for you. I also feel that you know the prices of the, some of the uh, stocks are still kept a bit high. There are a lot of unsold flats and uh, houses all over the country, mm -hmm. and that could be uh, a trigger in case you have attractive prices. As also, I won't rule out a further uh, reduction in interest rate, but I think in a floating uh, interest rate market, I think uh, that's a call a customer can take. And uh, since it's not going to be a scenario of a fixed rate for a long, long time to come, I think uh, they'd be better off uh, to uh, buy a house which is suitable to them. All right, it's time for us to take a very quick break. But when we come back, we'll talk more about how this rate cut can make it easier for us to buy homes. That's on the other side. Don't go anywhere. In association with. Welcome back. You're watching Property Guide on ET now. Thank you for staying with us. Our panelists are still with us. We're talking about using the rate cut that we received from the RBI this week to buy our homes. Does it make it easier for us to buy homes? Does it make it a better opportunity? That's the question that we're asking today on Property Guide. Gidambar Anand, I'm going to take this back to you. On one hand, uh, Viji Kanan saying that. This is always a good time to buy a house if you found the right house from the right builder. On the other hand, he told us that he does believe there's some room there for a haircut on prices on real estate in markets across the country. What's your response to that? I think uh, it's a very sad thing that real estate prices are judged by the prices in Mumbai and Delhi. This is not the correct way of uh, judging the pricing of real estate. You should look at it holistically as a developer or as a, uh, a real estate consultant or even as a banker. Across the country, prices are not very high. It's only maybe in some metros where there's too much of fluff and uh, that of course is bound to correct a bit, but not across the country. Because like I said, 
most products across the country are available in a bandwidth of 3500 to 5500 rupees a square foot and there is no room for correction over there so there will not be any developer who's willing to do an out of pocket expense just to uh, make a sale it's not going to happen so uh, this message should, should not be conveyed to the public at large that there's still room for correction there may be i'm repeating myself there may be a room for correction in maybe metros where there's too much of fluff in the pricing in some locations in some projects but that also is not a thumb rule so we must uh, definitely not judge uh, the real estate uh, pricing by what the pricing is in the tier one top locations of the country. All right, so it also depends on the kind of builder we're talking about, which both of our panelists who are from the bank said it's very important to choose very carefully what builder you are going with. Jaram, tell us a little more about how uh, a, you know an investor or a buyer right now can do due diligence on the builder that they're going with and go with the ones who have a track record for, for strong performance. I, I think first of all, you should go with builders who have a track record. It seems like a obvious thing to say, but most customers are not actually looking at it, and they're just going sometimes by by price or tall claims or promises. Uh, you have to look at past track record. Um, you know, uh, friends and family have always been the primary source of information for customers, and they are going to continue to remain so. However, many portals might come up out there. So, uh, you know, please go ahead, use that, talk to friends and family, but also look at, um, uh, you know, how many, let's say, banks and financial institutions have. A approved particular projects. If, if a project has been approved by you know, seven institutions, that more likely means uh, that the builder is of repute, that the project, is, uh, project looks to be on track, etc. Uh, so use that. Use um, uh, you know, people you trust. Maybe it's your sort of local branch, uh, bank branch head, or, or, or your relationship manager or someone, and, and kind of use some of those sources. And of course, uh, finally, there is a lot of information now available um, online in terms of forums uh, and uh, where, where we are seeing a lot of this conversation about uh, past, uh, past track record, the, the least you can do is just Google the builder that you're looking at. And um, if there are a lot of customer complaints that are being discussed online, that's probably a negative sign and you want to think about it. Niranjan, Hiran and Dani, so that's one thing, of course, to take a look at what sort of, uh, you know, banks have approved the developer, but there are also associations like Neredco, like Credi. Does that make a difference for a customer when I'm actually looking for a builder? Because let's be honest, the reputed builder makes all of the difference on delivery, makes all of the difference on quality. How do I find that reputed builder? I think basically you have to understand there are two aspects of every developer. First of all, his individual branding. So many of the builders definitely have their own individual brand name irrespective of the association that they are connected with, whether it is Credi or Naretko. But on the other hand, there is an influence by Naretko, by Credi, for the purposes of influencing their members in order to put indirect or direct pressure on them in order to perform and be good and better to their customers. I think there is a advantage of dealing with people who are with Credi, with people who are with Naretco, because that brings about credibility for the developer, but a responsibility to the agency uh, because they can put direct or indirect pressure on them. All right, I want to bring in B.G. Kanan, who's still on the phone with us. Mr. Kanan, the other angle to all of this is the cost of funds for the real estate industry. Now, we do know that because of the cost of funds, there have been some projects that have slowed down in terms of construction, in terms of completion and possession. Do you believe that, uh, you know, from cash flowing into that industry, the builder's ability to finish projects that he started, there will be, we'll see an improvement there as well? Half the problem is not coming from the, uh, what do you call the cost of funds. It, it is due to the lack of cash flows on account of sales not taking place. They uh, have a problem of cash flows uh, not coming, and therefore they are unable to meet some of the interest payments. Yitamar Anand, uh, from the point of view of Credi, how do you view this rate cut in terms of cost of funds for builders who are looking to finish projects that they've started? Well, I am uh, extremely, extremely hopeful that the banks will lower the interest rates at which they lend to developers. More than that, Faye, you know, I want to table one thing here. Uh, besides the rate card, you know, the very fact that the risk weightage on uh, loans for home loans for affordable housing have been, uh, has been decreased by 50%, you see, that sends a very clear message from the governor to uh, all uh, industry and eco economists at large, which says that 
for the country's economy to grow. Now, there was no other industry mentioned in the entire uh, credit policy by the governor except for real estate. So I would say that uh, the, the governor has acknowledged the importance of real estate in the growth story of the country because real estate actually is a trigger to increase the GDP, to increase employment, to increase manufacturing. So this is one thing besides the rate cut, which really has registered well with our association. And we really appreciate the fact that uh, the importance of the sector has been recognized. Okay, so, so, so let's have this one very quick conversation. Uh, we know that the RBI governor has done his bid for affordable housing. Affordable housing is still a fairly distant dream in this country. And I want responses from the gentleman from the banking industry and from you, Mr. Anand. What else do we need now to make affordable housing a reality? If we already have the push from the RBI, what else do we need? Give me your checklist. Well, I won't, uh, you, you know, go into the cliched uh, debate that we have, that we have, we want a single window clearance and all. That is a, something which is established. What we need is a more uh, productive PPP model from the government where uh, they make available cheaper land to the, to the industry and they work in tandem with us because on their own, the government will not be able to release this housing stock of six crore houses. It's uh, next to impossible. So the private sector has to be roped in to do this. And some fiscal incentive for affordable housing needs to give, be given either to the buyer or to, you know, maybe something like an excise benefit, like they do in SEZs, something like that, so that the private sector is encouraged to come into that space and uh, work aggressively over there because the opportunity is huge. The demand is there and uh, it's like a fire waiting to be lit. It's a fire waiting to be lit. We need land approvals and of course we need some sort of fiscal benefit. That's from the builder's point of view. Jaram, tell me from the banker's point of view, where do you see the gap right now going forward to make affordable housing actually affordable? Uh, first of all, I agree with all the points that Mr. Anand made. I uh, totally endorse them. They make a lot of sense. Uh, the RBI has already made a couple of very important changes. The, uh, the uh, opening up of uh, long-term uh, bonds window for, uh, uh, for affordable housing is a really good one. Uh, the uh, risk weightage, the promised reduction in risk weightage, we will see what the number is, but uh, the promised reduction in risk weightage is another really good one. Um, uh, so I think from a banking perspective, a lot of bases have already been covered by the regulators. So we are in very good shape there. Uh, the one other piece that I would add to the uh, uh, to, to the there is one electronification of land records and title deeds, um, and uh, the second is uh, creation of uh, rapid transport or public transport infrastructure uh, to the outskirts of cities because that's where affordable housing is coming up, and all the customers actually want public transport, and without which, uh, just a housing sector in itself is very difficult for it to come up. All right, infrastructure, both physical and social, is what we need to those suburbs that will actually have the affordable housing. And if we're running out of time, but if we wrap this up in a nutshell, the grand takeaway is simply this. This festive season, given the rate cut, given the softening stand by the RBI, given the fact that banks are going to continue to transmit or pass on that rate cut to you and me, if you find the right builder, the right project, the right location, especially at the right price, it might be time to go out and cut that deal. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the show on Property Guide, and thank you so much for watching.